Hi guys, welcome back to, uh, this is going to be part two. So just a quick recap of what I what we did in the last video was we put all the base colours down on this guy which was quite enjoyable to be fair. I'm enjoying painting this model so far. So I've got all the base colours down. Now all we've got to do is this is the first part where we're going to, I'm going to start painting some of the arms and head. Because we are painting the skin. So, Wild Flesh is our first colour for this. I do skin in a different kind of manner than what normally people would do it. I would put my two, put my base, where normally people would put the base and then the wash. I'll put the base, then my first layer, then the wash, and then Give it a little dry brush afterwards. For me, that gives a better effect than the other way around. And again, it's all on personal preference. You just do what you like. That's the whole point of this hobby. Mix that up. Do do do. So, what are you going to do? Base go to any skin area. So that's going to be in here where the neck is. Do. Just going to take a couple of coats to get this up to a nice solid colour. And then all you're doing is paint everything else where like so look when we use back here where your straps are. And as I say, all you do is paint. I've put these on cocktail sticks just for ease of painting. So I don't get like because normally when you got your fingers there's normally some oil on your fingers or something and it causes paint to come off. Obviously, I'm holding this model without the base, but you're not holding it in the same place all the time, so the paint doesn't seem to uh, come off more often. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this paint done, and I'll see you in a moment. So now we've got the War Boss green down. Nope, sorry, wrong colour. Wild Flesh. Just going over the skin, over his back underneath here. Can't really see it's too dark at the moment. Just change the brightness. Focus in there. Just underneath there. Uh, painted the head. Looks back in over here. Painted the head, arms, skin. So, a couple of layers on that to where I needed to be. So, the next colour is going to be War Boss Green. This, this colour I'll get through like nobody's business. I always seem to be having to buy this colour. Just because I think of the amount of layers sometimes I have to do to get the skin up to the right colour. Feels like it's the only colour of paint that I actually ever buy. Let's mix that up. That's mixed up, so start laying that on there. In the same manner as we did the last one, where we painted the wall flesh, paint the wall on screen. Which is actually going down surprisingly better than normal. So there it that's gonna be the actual skin tone of my orcs are in there. Good. So I'll get back to you guys. 
Right, that's that one done. So while we we'll leave that to dry, that's still drying at the moment, the second layer. What we're going to do now is we're going to use Cadian Flesh Tone for the boar's actual facial front. Nothing to do with the horns or anything, just his full, just his face. Just the skin on his face. It's quite a close colour to um, Gawthor Brown. And then when the wash goes over it, it, it does give that little bit of contrast. So you can tell there is a, a difference in the two. As I say, putting the Rakhar flesh down first allows this colour to go on so much better. No, that's a bit too thin. Sometimes as well your paints can be too thin and they end up being basically a wash. It's it's trying to find that balance between the two. Sometimes I do over thin my paints and then they end up being a wash. <laughs> Which I did with the red. So that's thin. All we're going to do is we're just going to paint in the skin. Between the Rakarth flesh and where the Gawthor Brown meets when I did the Rakarth flesh layer. I tried to feather it just so that when I put the... So I used my brush and I just went like that and just stroked across the edge so that means when I come to do the wash there's not so much of a broad transition between the two colours so it actually looks like the fur is coming from his face and not just a line across his face And it's easier for the Cadian flesh tone. And you can go over the Gawthorpe band just a little bit more to add a little bit of colour transition depending on what you want to do. But yeah, I'll get back to you in a sec guys with this one done. Alright guys, that's the uh, Cadian flesh tone done. Nice couple of coats. Bring that up to nice solid colour over the back of our flesh. So, now that is all the base coats done for the ball itself and the war boss rider so now what we get to do is we get to put some washes on it to bring out some definition so what i do for the just the orc skin and the boar's face is what i do is i put a layer of lime and medium down first over the top just so it like, properly runs into the recesses so there's no like weird splodges or build up anywhere across the face. Um, so the colour we use for the first shade is Agar Sethate. That's going to go over the face, horns, body, saddles, leather, wolf pelt, any other fur, any other skulls, bones. That sort of thing. So, get your arm in medium. Lay that on first. One one brush fall should do. Oh, I think I'm off camera here. Sorry, guys. One brush fall should do the entirety of the face enough. For you to get the wash down. If not, just a little bit more, not too much. You don't want to drench the thing, otherwise, it will, it will just run everywhere. Just 
draw your brush off a bit take some off in certain places and as you do go straight to your wash using a medium layer and start laying this in and then it should run smoothly into the deepest of uh, crevices and not like laying up on the bulky parts of the skin yep yeah, I'll get back to you guys when that's done and I'll show you what it looks like right I'm back to show it done so what I'm going to do now is quickly see if I can show you this Brought out definition. Can't see too well, but the I'll put some still pics at the end just so you can see in more detail. So I'm going to complete the rest of the washes now, which means I'm going to be using built on green for the skin, no no for any steel or armor panels, and agro associate for any more fur or anything like that on the model. So again, just one last thing with the built on green. With the face and skin and everything, I do put again the same as what I did previously was put a layer of lime and medium down first and then whack the built in green on just so it goes into the recesses a little bit easier. <coughs> it just helps it to run more smoothly, I feel, into the um, deepest recesses because you, you don't want the skin to. Uh, too dark keeps it quite light afterwards so, wash is a pretty straightforward step pretty simple pretty quick as well so I'll complete this off and get back to you in a sec guys right that's all the wash is done so let me show you what that looks like. So that's all the wash you've done on this one. And also, off camera I painted all the base coat. I haven't put the washes on these yet, but it's pretty straightforward to like the orc itself, just painted the base coat. Silver on the weapon, that's ready for when we do the corros corrosion and stuff and the rusting. But the rest is pretty just like the skin and the bandages so what we're going to do now is um i'm going to i use dry brushing more than edge highlighting just for like speed more than anything i can do the edge highlighting but it, it does take a while so i just opt for dry brushing so i'm going to use tail tail light alka what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush all the leather bits, what we've just painted, like the saddle and the straps and his little cape and everything. Also, as well, dry brushing, you want to dry brush the ball itself, but I dry brush that with uh, Zandri dust, just because it's just a little bit lighter than the, the skin itself. I know it's a base colour, but it makes a nice dry brush, so... The brush I'm using is a really, 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 really soft bristle brush. Just, just aids with the uh, dry brushing. Work it in. Wipe it off. Oh, always test it on your hand to see how much you're picking up, and then from the model. So I say use a soft bristle one because the paint seems to, I don't know, but it seems to like stick to the edges. Can't really see it too well. But yeah, it does stick to the edges a lot better and you will see a more softer 
softer highlight than what the like hard bristle brushes. See the Games Workshop one which I bought, it was a good dry brush but it seemed to just like fry up over time. I have had it a while but the longest the longest softer bristles seem to seem to work better for me. Yeah, I'll get back to you when that's done guys. Right, that's the dry brushing done. Hope you can see some of the subtle highlights and the fur and stuff. So now I've done that. I'm gonna glue him to his base because most of the bottom half now is done. There's no more to be really painted around the bottom end of the model. So what I did is obviously when I base coated this, spray went onto the bottom of the feet. So all I did get a bit of sandpaper and I just I'm just sanding the bits off on the bottom. You're not gonna get I can't get it all off because of the way the feet go and I don't want to lose the level of the feet so I'm just gonna leave it at that. There's enough plastic contact on each end. And then all I do is obviously my Orcs on snow bases, so paint the bits around the edge because obviously I wouldn't be able, if I wanted to put him on there like that, it'd be difficult to get underneath the chain. I don't want to mess up the paint I've already put on there. So I'll paint enough of it to cover underneath where I can't get to. Then a few dabs of glue. One, two, three. And four, place him down, line him up where you need to get him. Oops, there is he. For some reason, I thought he was going to instantly stick. And then, just let that dry. In the meantime, I'll leave drying over there. Well, I'll show you what what you got to do with the weapons. But typhus corrosion and the weapon. Grab a pretty rubbish brush. One of your old brushes you're not too bothered about because this side's got like bits in and stuff. And then just where you where you're going to paint any lead belt on the weapons, just paste this on. Goes down kind of like a wash. Not too, it's not too thin that it just runs everywhere. It's not too thick that it gloops up. Yep, and then just do that on any weapons you have. Not saying you have to do this for the weapons, this is just what I do. Just gives them a more uh, rusty look as though they've been battle worn and stuff. Yeah, I'll do the other one and then I'll get back to you when this guy's glued and dried to his base and we'll go from there. See you in a sec, guys. Right, guys, that's him glued to his base and the typhus corrosion on the weapons. It's all ready and done. So now, what we're going to do is, I don't know why I'm shaking this paint, it's dry brush, but Necron Compound Dry, a bit of that on your brush, and we're going to dry brush all the steel, all the steel areas. So that includes all chain mail, all the armor plates, with the soft bristles as well, the dry brush, you don't have to put a lot of pressure 
to the areas to get the paint on there. So I was doing that off camera. Um, you don't have to apply a lot of pressure, it just gives it that metallic look. Try and get most of the rivets as much as you can because they're going to be the ones where they're most, most silver. Yeah, that's yeah, that's going to be pretty straightforward, really. Well, I'll finish that off, and I'll get back to you. Well, oh, that's in glue to his base. Finish that off. Just I've just painted the white. It's not a very great coat, but the snow is going to go over that anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, put the washers on the skin and everything now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush scar snick green onto the skin, same as what we did before. Words. Get that off your brush. Test on your hand so there's not too much. And then just little soft strokes. Do you want to keep it concentrated on On the actual face itself. Oh, that's going to be hard to zoom in on. But well, it does add that little extra bit to the face. So, what I'll do is I'll finish this off. We're quite close to finishing there, there's not much left. A couple more little bits, last little details, a couple more dry brushes, and then it's glued in together and then. I'll show you some still pics at the end guys. Right, so now what we're going to do is now we are going to focus on the weapons. Because after the weapons are done now, all it is is literally just the eyes, teeth, last little fine little bits. Um, nothing major after this. So, riser rust or riser rust, however it's pronounced. And neck on compound is going to be the two colours for this. So get your dry brush again. Open up the uh, open up the pot. Do do do. Take it off. Then with the weapon and start. Working this paint up, oh, you're going to do a bit too much off the brush for that one. Really want to work, really want to work this one in, really work it in because. focus on this little piece and I focus yes it adds more of a it's not focusing it at all there we go that rusted look onto the onto the blade zoom the focus back out again so just build this up until you feel that you're happy with it 
and then do the same thing a bit lighter with the second one with Necron compound do it again another so wait for this one well it's dry anyway because it's dry bush but wait for this one to finish and then go over with the second layer of Necron compound and then you'll have your rusted rusted weapons I'll get back to you in a sec guys Right guys, now we're just going to finish this model off. So what I did, I did off camera, what I did is I just put my snow down on my base, rim the, put put the rimming on the base just with some black, um, painted the eyes with them, can't really see there, finished off the teeth. Finished off the teeth, eyes in there. If now I'll finish off the claws on Oh doesn't want to focus so up. So finish off that, finish off everything now. All we've got to do now is glue it together and we're done. So because there's paint on these you're not gonna be able to use the plastic glue because it'll there won't be a strong enough bond. In the long run, I've done it before where I've painted something, then thinking I can use plastic glue, and then while I'm having a battle or something, the arms fell off. <laughs> it's just a one armed orc just roaming the battlefield. So, bit of super glue. See if this wants to hold. There we go, so all you're gonna do is I'm just gonna carry on gluing the rest of him on now. Bit of a gap there between that arm. Okay, so I've glued the arm on the wrong way. So I'll come back and I'll show you when he's complete, guys. Okay, guys, that's him completely glued together now. And I actually glued the arm on right this time. So let's zoom him in here. That's him complete. All glued together. I will put some still picks up for him at the end um, but yeah really fun model to paint a lot of detail within the model itself and just let me know in the comments what you think any improvements or suggestions but that's my colour scheme I will be uploading any more videos like this so if you could just if you could leave a like and subscribe that would be much appreciated. And I'll catch you again next time, guys.